Like many others, I too started on sourdough bread baking when Shelter in Place was announced few months back. And since then, I have baked countless sourdough breads. After a few trial and error, I started to get the hang of it and definitely wanted to share my recipe here too. Sourdough bread is a slow fermented, good for your gut, healthy alternative to conventional bread. It does not require any commercial yeast. It does need some time and planning in advance. Later in this video, I have given a summary with time schedule that I follow to bake the bread. It should come very handy to you. Sourdough bread needs sourdough starter and I have given in description below link to my blog post where I explained the process of making sourdough starter in detail along with an infographic for you to download that will be very useful if you're making it for the first time. Step 1 is Autolies where we mix the flour and water to make a shaggy dough. For my recipe, I used a mix of all-purpose flour and wheat flour. We don't have to knead the dough here. We just mix everything so that there is no dry flour bits. You want to scrape the bowl at the end and then cover it and let it rest for 2 hours and during that time the gluten will develop and make the dough more softer to handle. Step 2 is adding the ripe starter. I take 25 gram of my master starter and mix it with 50 gram of flour and 50 gram of water to prepare the living. It is then kept overnight to mature after which I use it in the dough. Spread the living on the dough, wet your hand and then combine the starter to the dough by pinching your finger and thumb as shown in the video. Again, we are not kneading, we are just mixing everything. Once done, you leave it aside for 15 minutes. Step 3 is adding the salt and we follow the exact same method we did when we mixed the starter to the dough. We just pinch and mix the salt to the dough. Step 4 is slap and fold. This method might feel a little tough for absolute beginners. It took a while for me too. So just wet your hand and the table or the boat that you're using. Then grab the shaggy dough and drop it on a board or table then fold it. Grab it again at 90 degree angle and you repeat this process for 2 minutes. You will realize that the dough has gained a lot of strength at the end. It will feel more airy, more soft and less sticky. Then place it back in the bowl, cover and leave it aside for 30 minutes. is multiple rounds of stretch and fold. Again, wet your hand and grab one edge of the dough, stretch it upward and fold it on the other side. Then rotate the bowl 180 degree and repeat the same process. Then at 90 degree and then once again stretch and fold. And last at again 180 degree angle and then stretch and fold.
then grab the dough and lift it high and then fold on both the sides to create a smooth round like structure on top. I do 6 rounds of stretch and fold, the first 4 at a gap of 15 minutes and the last 2 at a gap of 30 minutes. At every step you will realize that the dough is getting smoother, it stretches much easily without tearing apart, it's a good sign. Now depending on what flour you used and what temperature is inside your house, you might have to do more or less stretch and fold. If you notice the dough is rising or you notice lots of air pockets, you might want to stop at fourth stretch and fold. Step 6 is bulk fermentation. You can rest for the next 2-3 to three hours where you don't have to do any activity. Just cover the bowl. The dough will double in size. You can see a lot of air pockets, a lot of bubbles and when you shake the bowl, the dough might even wobble a little bit. All good signs of a happy dough. Seven is pre-shaping. I love this step the most and find it absolutely magical. You dust the table or board that you're using with a little bit of flour and dust some of the some flour even on the dough. Then gently transfer the dough to the board. You want to be careful not to deflate the dough in the process. So take time as you move the dough to the board or the table. Once done, dust some more flour and then using a bench scraper, pull the dough towards you in a circular motion as shown in the video. You want to do this step quickly but gently and do this a few times to pre-shape the dough. Then leave it uncovered for 30 minutes. This will allow the dough to relax. Step 8 is final shaping. Start by preparing your banking basket or a bowl layered with clean piece of cloth and dust rice flour on it. Then dust some rice flour on the pre-shaped dough. Using the bench scraper, quickly flip the dough. Next, you pull the edges gently to form a rough rectangular shape and follow the steps I showed here to fold the dough. Finally, using the same steps we used to pre-shape the dough, pull the dough towards you using the bench scraper to give a round shape. Once done, grab the dough and flip it on the prepared basket or bowl. Cover it with a clean cloth and place it inside a grocery bag or a ziplock. Then seal tight using a clip. Place the bag in the refrigerator for cold rice. I keep it for 15 hours. Next day morning, preheat the oven and the casserole dish that you're going to use to bake the bread. Preheat to 500 degree Fahrenheit. You can also use a pizza stone, 
but you will need something to cover the dough as it bakes. Take out the dough once the oven is preheated and check for fermentation by pressing it gently with your finger. It should slowly spring back but leave an indentation. Prepare a parchment paper and dust rice flour on the dough. Then quickly flip the dough on the parchment paper. Scrolling the bread is important so you allow the bread to expand by giving a certain direction. I keep my scoring very simple but you can make whatever design you like. Then place it on the preheated casserole dish, cover and bake for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, take off the lid. Reduce the temperature to 475 Fahrenheit and bake for 20 minutes. Once done, let the bread cool down on a wire rack for at least 6 hours before you slice the bread. If you slice the bread while it's still hot, you will let out the steam at a very faster rate, which will dry out the bread much sooner. Also, the texture will turn out gummy and not light or airy as it should be. So definitely wait till the evening and enjoy it with a cup of tea. Use a good serrated knife to slice the bread. As you can see, the bread turned out lovely with beautiful even open crumbs. It's light, it tastes amazing and we gobbled up a couple slices right away. I hope you will find this video helpful and I will eventually share more recipes using sourdough starter. If you enjoyed this video, please do give a like and share. Also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.